that we need have to come from our soils. The only place we get the nutrients is from our soils. So now this is in that connection between you know, healthy food and healthy soils. Because all our nutrients have to come from our soils. And of course, how the nutrients are made available depends on the health of that soil. So if we now look at the health of the soil, we say, well, what governs healthy soil? And, and there's another whole lecture on that and a whole discussion on it, but in very simple terms, it depends on the mineral sort of content of the soil, its organic matter structure, how much organic matter or sponge is there. But most importantly, it's governed by microorganisms because soils are a living crucible of life. They're not just dead inert things that we walk over. I mean, we do walk over them. But really, there's literally billions and billions of organisms in that soil, in each teaspoon of soil, billions of organisms. And it's the activity of these organisms that actually govern the life and the health of that soil. And it's those organisms that also govern the life and the nutritional uptake of that soil. Okay, because those minerals in that soil are generally not available readily and they're only made available by the microorganisms, particularly the fungi that are growing through that soil. And so to get the nutrients we need, we need yeah, healthy food, we need healthy soils, but now we also need the right healthy microbial solubilization uptake and cycling of nutrients from that soil. It's, it's really quite stunning because um, in nature it is so important when we, we above the ground here think that okay, plants take up nutrients, but in nature it's a fallacy. Plants don't actually take up nutrients. They're not in the race because the fungi, the microbes are just so much more competitive. Uh, for example, um, a cubic meter of healthy soil contain up to 25,000 kilometers of fungal hyphae, colonizing throughout that soil, solubilizing nutrients and taking up nutrients from that soil. And see, that's in a sense uh, where our nutrition comes from, from the activity of these organisms. By comparison, plants, and while they do can take up nutrients from soils through their roots, it's, it's a much, much, much more primitive and limited uh, capacity. And also there's a fundamental difference. The roots of plants just take up nutrients from the soil solution and the, the liquid, the water that's in the soil. But they have no way of discriminating and concentrating essential nutrients and excluding toxins. So when you have plants that are basically living on hydroponically, without these fungi or without these microorganisms, they're getting whatever's in that soil solution in their transpiration stream. So this comes now back to, our, uh, that's basic some of the science, but this comes back fundamentally to our health issue because, see, up to World War II, all our food was grown basically through these natural processes. It was basically grown through these... Um, organic uh, systems, you know, like with minimal sort of, I mean, we had some fertilizers, but they weren't massive, and most of the nutrient and f uh, food production was through these organic processes. And so all our nutrition in our food was governed by these natural processes. But after World War II, things changed actually radically, because we then had the power both to cultivate soil, to produce artificial fertilizers, to produce biocides, but also we had the critical need because after the Second World War we had food shortages and so we had to get into this business of how do we grow more food. And that was in a sense part of the Green Revolution which we were involved in and we then grew more and more and more food. And of course we were very, very successful in that because in the Green Revolution we were able to sort of massively produce food production, it got a lot, lot cheaper, so food is now a fraction of the cost of our income than it used to be. Uh, by being able to grow more food, we are able to grow more people. We raised the global population from 3 billion in 1960 to 7.1 billion people now. But on top of that, what we've also done in this sort of industrial agriculture over the last 50 years, 
we fundamentally change how those plants get their nutrients. Whereas before they got them through these microbial processes, through that selective uptake and solubilization, now our food, this industrial agriculture is totally dependent on fertilizer inputs. So now the food we eat has basically got the nutrition of what we put on in fertilizers. And of course, that's pretty critical, whereas before our food had 30 plus essential minerals, now most of our food is dominated, saturated, oversupplied with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but often has none of those other 30 essential trace elements. And so often it has none of the, we then often have none of the enzymes or certainly much reduced capacity of many of the enzymes that we need for our healthy biochemistry. And if you take something like selenium, for example, okay, selenium is needed at parts per million, very, very, very low levels in our diet, but it's an essential nutrient because it's essential for some enzymes because those enzymes are the enzymes that kill cancer cells. And so as we produce aberrant cells in our growth, our natural systems have enzymes that kill those and, and keep us healthy. If we don't have the selenium, we don't have those enzymes, we don't have that uh, control capacity. So we have fundamentally changed qualitatively that food, you know, the nutrient quality of that food. Our food now, and it varies, of course, depending on crop and how it's grown and stuff like that, but, you know, like, you know, in UK Ministry of Health data and so forth, and USDA data too, a lot of our industrial food now might have a third of the nutrient concentration that it did pre-World War II. And it's that third of the nutrient concentration that's really impacting us very severely because, effectively, we have to eat three times more of the starch and the sugars and what have you for our body to get the nutrients it needs. And so there's a big trigger for obesity. But also we're missing out on a lot of the essential nutrients that our bodies need. And so this is where we've now got these self-induced, systemic, you know, rampant sort of disease conditions being triggered. We've also got a fundamental problem in the sense that we're running out of oil. I mean, obviously not totally, but it'll become more unavailable, more unaffordable. We're currently putting in 10 units of oil energy into our industrial agriculture for every unit of food energy we get out. It's totally unsustainable. And of course, we invest that through cultivation, through fertilizers, through biocides, and of course, all the transport and logistics involved in our food sale. Within decades, that's no longer going to be sustainable. We're going to have to get back to sort of where are their viable you know, food systems without those massively protected subsidized inputs. And so we've got this fundamental challenge, how do we get back to what we call food integrity? Now, how do we get back to not just food security, the quantitative supply of our food, but how do we make sure that food has the qualitative nutrient densities and the whole range of essential nutrients? How do we make sure that farmers are viable locally in growing that food? How do we make sure that that food is, yet yeah, ecologically sustainable? Okay, and so now this comes back to the, the key point of why we're here as urban agriculture. 